Okay. So let's uh, let's get started. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, we have this uh, set of slides uploaded uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago already. So um, you you guys should have like downloaded like uh, I mean the slides from the e class. I mean by yourself. Okay. If you haven't done so, okay, please do it. Okay. And um, so after the introduction of um, after the the previous set of slides, I mean the getting started, we are. Finally, okay, uh, ready to talk about the deep learning, okay? So, well, um, so what is the uh, artificial neural ne networks, or abbreviated as uh, ANN, okay? Um, uh, the first thing you may ask is, you know, why do we talk about ANN? Because this class is deep learning, right? So, the relationship between deep learning and the artificial neural network pretty much like uh, they are they are basically like uh, just uh, another way to call the a is just another way to call deep learning okay so it's uh because we want to you know look at the we want to we want to create artificial intelligence right I mean so it will be you know natural very logical to look at the brain architecture, I mean, because, well, the the uh, the animal, okay, including human, I mean ourselves, okay, I mean are the, you know, intelligent beings, right? So we can, you know, we can refer to when we want to create an intelligent system, right? So obviously, like, uh, I mean. For human or for animal, okay, the 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 brain is, you I mean is controlling the, the the thinking, okay, the idea, okay. So we 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 look at look at the brain architecture, okay. If you want to build an intelligent machine, so so that is actually where artificial neural network gets its idea from, okay, and. Uh, but uh, I want to emphasize that nowadays, okay, because originally, okay, artificial neural network actually gets so many ideas from the biological neural networks. But nowadays, okay, there are many, many places, okay, the researcher found that, okay, the brain by, uh, neural network, okay, uh, is not so efficient. Okay, so so the current design of artificial neural network, okay, in many places, will be different. Are different uh, uh, than the biological neural network. I mean, we will talk about this. Uh, I mean, in, a, in I mean, in, in the future. Okay, so the ANN, the artificial neural networks, okay, are very very the core of deep learning. Okay. It is, uh, I mean, you know, we know they are, you know, versatile, powerful, stable, uh, scalable, okay? So, um, nowadays we use the artificial neural networks, okay, to do many, many, you know, highly complex tasks for us. For example, the Google image use the ANN to classify billions of images, okay? Apple Siri used uh, ANN to do speech recognition. YouTube used ANN to recommend the videos for the customer. And uh, not to mention, you know, DeepMind, uh, you know, AlphaGo, okay, uh, use ANN to, to beat the world champion in Go, in the game of Go. Okay, so this, all these are, uh, all these tasks are achieved by ANN. Of course, I mean, you may say, oh, wait, 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 wait. The deep learning, uh, I mean, AlphaGo, I mean, isn't AlphaGo like, uh, in, I mean, uh, you know, designed by using like uh, reinforcement learning? Well, there are, you know, 
alien has many different flavors as we will talk about uh, in this class in the future okay so the the, the um, uh, reinforcement learning okay used in AlphaGo is called the deep reinforcement learning which also incorporate the the, the artificial uh, uh, um, uh, neural networks in uh, the design okay just want you to be aware of that okay so artificial neural network were first introduced in 1943 okay so this is really not a new thing okay and um, you know it has been there for close to 70 uh, how many close to 80 years right close to 80 years already okay so of course at that time okay because at that time people very few people have deep understanding of the brain architecture so this concept was you know brought up by neurophysiologist okay the, the, the those uh, doctor who work on the brain research okay this guy called Warren McCulloch and the mathematician Walter Pitts okay so this brain researcher collaborate with a, math a mathematician okay to propose this alien concept okay so there and architecture obviously is very different from the current one okay but uh, at that time they are able to use uh, their AN architecture to you know to solve the propositional logic okay uh, I would talk about their simplified uh, uh, AN architecture okay later okay I mean I think hopefully today okay we are going to talk about this okay just to give you an idea, okay, uh, what an ANN and in in old days looked like, okay. So, so in the 1940s, okay, this their research, you know, because their research was already able to 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 deal with propositional logic, okay, which is considered one of the difficult problems in computer science, okay. Um, so so their success okay actually okay until 1960s okay led to the you know i mean why why do you be, believe that you know we will be able to create artificial intelligence okay you know very soon but you know this is this marks the first rise of artificial intelligence research okay from 1940s to 1960s okay there were so many people dedicated to AI research okay starting from MIT uh, uh, Stanford Carnegie Mellon and then you know so many very famous universities uh, have so many people working on AI and uh, at the end in the 1960s the uh, I mean the they prove uh, I mean uh, to be fair okay uh, again I will tell I will talk about why um, they the, the, the you know uh, it, it, it doesn't work why it doesn't work okay it is because okay they can prove there's for their AI model okay for their AI model there's a limitation there's a limitation they couldn't you know I mean for a little bit more complicated problem they just couldn't solve it okay so I will talk about this later okay so in the 1980s okay people start to find out okay remember I told you uh, they because they prove that I mean there's a limitation for the early AI model so people start to find out that we can uh, design a more complicated AI model okay basically okay let me put it this way the original AI model is only one layer you only have one layer of neurons and they found out okay if we add more layers we seem to be able to solve more complicated problems okay because of this finding okay 
in the early 1980s, okay, to about 1990, about 10 years, okay, uh, there will be a revival of interest in AI, okay. So, so uh, again, like uh, so many papers were written, okay, uh, and uh, uh, obviously, as I told you, okay, because the architecture become deeper, we have more layers in the model, so the training become more and more difficult. Okay, so a lot of pe paper, you know, uh, talk about training techniques. Okay, um, so they, they were developed like uh, in that period of time. But okay, about the year, I mean, I mean, about in the in the in the nineteen nineties. Okay, um, a lot of um, uh, alternative algorithms nowadays that we call them machine learning algorithms, okay, such as like, uh, the, the most famous one is uh, SVM, okay, uh, supported vector machine, okay, I mean, they, they were inv in, invented in 1990s, okay, and uh, people found out that, okay, SVM performed much, much better than neural networks, okay, the neural network is difficult to train, and uh, perform worse than SVM. So people think like, uh, well, why do, I, why do we need to start with like, uh, artificial neural networks? So people gave up artificial neural networks, okay? And uh, you know, try to, they, they embrace, I mean, I mean, different variations of the machine learning algorithm. You know, uh, I, I, I'm not sure, I mean, uh, how many of you here took machine learning classes. There are so many different machine learning algorithms out there, okay? We talked about, well, in, in the previous slides, we talked about um, uh, linear regression. We talked about polynomial regression. Uh, you can consider them as like a machine learning algorithm as well, okay? Uh, there are other famous ones, such as, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, decision tree. Okay, uh, um, you know, knife base, okay, methods, as well as like, uh, you know, SVN, okay, uh, um, I mean, this, this uh, algorithms, they are, you know, faster, okay, uh, they don't require, like, uh, they, they, their performance are in general much better, okay, than the a artificial neural network at that time, at that time, okay? Why it is like that? I will talk about that uh, in the next slide, okay? In the next slide, okay? So this is like, uh, you know, because of that, okay, the deep learning or ANN, okay, you know, uh, you know, uh, becomes like, uh, you know, um, you know, Absolute, okay, you can say that, okay, in, in 1990s. Actually, uh, I went to United States in 1993, okay, and at that time, okay, uh, when I applied my graduate study in United States, in the research statement, I actually wrote that I want to do AI for, you know, for, for, for like uh, the game of Go, okay, because I like to play Go, okay, in my college years. So if I, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, never mind. Okay. So I, I mean, if, if I stick to my plan, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll become one of the you know, researchers for the AlphaGo. I don't know, maybe. But uh, at that time, when I went to US, nobody studied artificial neural networks anymore. So I, I pretty much gave up that research, okay. Um, but who knows, you know, you know, after another, you know, couple of decades, I, 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 I'll, I'll be here talking about artificial neural network again, okay. So it's uh, interesting, like, uh, you, know, um, you know, very interesting uh, uh, thing to happen, okay. So, so this is like a second wave of artificial intelligence, you can you can say 
you know, the second wave artificial intelligence. Okay, so now, okay, we are now witnessing another wave of interest in artificial neural network or another uh, wave of artificial intelligence. Okay, so, um, so this is actually the third wave, the third wave. So, so you may ask, since the second wave of uh, AI die, okay, uh, because I mean the ANN perform worse than machine learning model, so why is it so powerful nowadays? What's the difference? Okay, uh, in the nineteen nineties, okay, and now I mean well, the AI you can say the AI the third wave of AI is uh, it starts around like a uh, two thousand ten about that, uh, the, the, that period of time. So uh, what's, the, what's the difference between these two, 20 years? What's the difference? Okay, let me put it this way. Okay, there are three differences, three differences. Okay, the first two are actual accidents. The last one is you know, due to the researcher's effort okay in artificial neural network okay the first one is that okay in the 1980s 1990s okay we don't have a lot of data okay for deep learning model or for artificial neural networks if you want to train an artificial neural network you have to have sufficient amount of training data set okay um, unfortunately at that time in the 1980s and the 1990s we don't have a good measure to collect data quickly okay um, in the 19 remember I told you I went to United States in 1993 right at that time uh, I still remember we were using Netscape okay on the Sun workstation okay that were first connected to the internet for maybe like a uh, one two years only so in the 1993 the internet is in its infancy okay we don't have World Wide Web okay but nowadays well we can you know collect many many I mean tons of uh, many different types of data through internet okay for example if you want the photos the Instagram has so many photos waiting for you to collect okay if you want to collect sensor data okay again I mean many IOT devices are actually online okay there are many many you know uh, data set freely available on the internet that you can download so easily okay this is not the case in the 1980s or 1990 or even in the 1990s okay the internet or World Wide Web is so mature nowadays it makes the data collection much easier okay. I'm not saying you know data set is an easy task I never say that okay even though you can collect data okay but a lot of time it takes time to label your data set okay and the labeling uh, may take some time and also the collected data may have noise right so it, 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 you know the I mean how to prepare a good data set is still a question okay but but at least we have a way to quickly collect a large amount of data which was not available like in old days so this is I mean of course internet or World Wide Web was not invented because of AI right I mean we use World Wide Web okay all the time but uh, obviously World Wide Web was there okay I mean the, the web was there it's not because of the AI okay so so this is the first accident 
Okay, what's the second accident? In the old days, you know, uh, like 1980s and 1990s, okay, the computer is very weak. It's very weak, okay. Um, you know, thanks to the Moore's law, okay, the computer's, uh, you know, performance doubles pretty much every couple of years, you know. So now, I mean, the computer becomes faster and faster, okay. But, uh, but still, like, uh, okay, if we stick to the, the traditional computer architecture, the AI is not going to be so e easy to materialize. Okay, the, the, the training of the, of the artificial neural network is still difficult. Okay, if we consider the current architecture, I mean, the, or like traditional architecture of, uh, of, uh, of a computer. Okay, when I, when I refer to traditional computer of architecture, I'm talking about the CPU. Okay, even for the CPU, uh, the, the advanced CPU nowadays, do you use CPU to train the, the machine, uh, machine learning, uh, train the model? Probably not, right? Everybody know, like, uh, if you want to train a neural network now efficiently, what, what do you need? GPU, right? So it was the GPU designed for AI? No, it was designed for what? Huh? GPU stands for graphic processing unit, right? It was actually developed in the early 2000s, okay? Um, I think the, the first one is NVIDIA, okay, NVIDIA, okay? They, they, they want to speed up the process of like a graphical, uh, uh, you know, graphics. It, for gaming, for gaming, especially for gaming, okay? Because people play games. They want the most sophisticated, like a, like a, like a, uh, you know, the the experience, okay, from their monitor, obviously, okay. So so the the refresh rate becomes higher and higher, and uh, you know, uh, the the picture quality, okay, the the resolution becomes higher and higher, right? And um, because of that, okay, I mean they were thinking like, okay. If we can use like a, you know, the GPU, what's the difference between GPU and the CPU? GPU has so many cores, right? You can, you can consider GPU as the collection of many, many small CPUs. And each small core basically deal with one pixel on your monitor. It will compute the, the color and the intensity for one pixel for your, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, let me, let me, let me get a phone call real quick. Wait, Yi Xiangzheng, I'm Wait, I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 so each, each core basically control one pixel, the output of one pixel. It will calculate the, the, the output of one pixel for you. So you have so many pixels on your monitors, right? So that is why, okay, the GPU has many, many cores, okay? However, however, um, later on, researchers start to find out that, okay, we could use GPU cores to speed up the computation of matrix, the matrix manipulations, okay? Huh? What happens? Sorry. <laughs>